young, you don't think about what's really going to happen in your life until you actually reach that point. You know, you think about your big dreams, college, athletics, sports, NFL, whatever. But what happens when it, that all gets taken away from you? of the season and we were there. That's right and I know that you've been anxiously checking off your calendar every day before That's football right. season. Yeah. You may have realized you didn't have anything left to check off today. Yeah. If you can believe it, the football season is officially here. Earlier tonight the area season kicking off in Class D2 and no one hesitating to fire up the grills in Maywood. Tigers hosting the Stapleton Broncos. Born in a small town such as Maywood, Nebraska with 315 people. There's not a lot of um, extra crook curricular activities that you really can do. Um, my graduating class at 18 and uh, at one point um, within our four years from freshman to senior we all played some type of sport whether that just be football, basketball or just running track and field. Um, we just did one sport and there wasn't a whole lot of uh, people that didn't do three sports. Um, we would have um, people along the lines of, you know, being hurt in football and then coming back in basketball just because we didn't have a lot of numbers. When I was younger, um, my parents used to say I used to run around the house. Um, from the time Dan was little, um, he was always really active, uh, liked to experiment with different sports, do uh, lots of different activities. Um, probably the thing that we remember most is he would just go outside and just run laps around the house um, because he liked to run. And that's what he would do, just over and over and over again. Um, neighbors lot used to laugh at him. He'd have an outfit for every sport that he was playing. He'd go in he's from his football uniforms to his soccer uniforms to um, just being a track star and, and running and running and running. First doctor suggested that I uh, go in and have an MRI done. And when after I had that MRI done, you know, I felt fine. You know, I was still running, you know, putting in a, l a little mileage here and there. And I wasn't, you know, really overdoing it. And he looks me, he comes in and he goes, you definitely have, you have a meniscus tear in your knee. I think um, when he first had his injury, it was difficult to um, deal with that out at the time it happened when he was on the court and had to be carried off and, you know, to, to see your kid in pain and not be able to really do anything to help him at the current time it was really difficult. Uh, lots of doctor appointments later, uh, lots of uh, visits, x-rays, trying to figure out uh, the cause of the injury and what our next steps are going to be. Weren't very familiar with uh, the procedures and the process involved, um, what was really involved in an e-scope, how that would work. Um, you know, just needing a lot more information and sometimes it not being available. And we have to take some of the meniscus out and we have to take um, some of the padding in your knee away, some of the ligaments that were bad and you know you're very close to having very significant knee pain for the rest of your life and when I had that first knee surgery done um, my mom told me that you know you gotta really examine where you wanted to be as an athlete. Could you be there? Could you be strong enough? Could you be able to finish your races? Well, cost aside, I mean, and there is always that. Uh, medical procedures are expensive. Um, trying to figure out the best options, you know, surgery, no surgery, therapy, no therapy, um, talking to different doctors, getting different recommendations, um, sometimes them not agreeing on what the injury actually was and how it should be treated is really difficult and, and very tough as a parent. Um, by my concern, as Dan has gotten older and continued to have additional uh, issues with his knee and, and those kind of concerns was what would be the long term. 
effect for him as an adult and being able to uh, walk as he got older, you know, would be something that he's going to struggle to just be able to get around if we continue to have injuries. and. Have I, I said, okay, let's just get it reevaluated. Maybe they'll tell me that, you know, you needed to change a few things. And that's when they told me that they found another a meniscus tear. This was in a different spot, a weirder spot than what you normally would I'd see. To be honest, meniscus. you know, I, I'd said you're done. Um, I think I think you need to quit. I think you need to. If you have to run, if running is really important to you, that you do it on a recreational basis, on a once in a while basis, um, not for a regular training session. I think it, it comes back down to just being concerned about where he would be years from now and if he would be able to you know, walk comfortably without pain, um, be able to do normal activities and, and be everything he could be as an adult. I was constantly, and I had my second knee surgery the first thing I did after my second knee surgery when I was sitting in the hospital is I reached down and I grabbed my knee. For the first time, I had actually felt like giving up, like I was in so much pain. Um, you couldn't imagine having two knee surgeries in six months. You know, there's people that, and being an athlete and try to prove your worth to a team, to your family, to your high school, um, and be sitting out because it hurts, you know, you don't really have a whole lot that you can play into except that you're injured for the rest of your, you know, your junior season. So I sat out, you know, I helped, I helped coach the team, I helped uh, during practices, helped keep splits, I tried to cheer people on, you know, try to give them advice a little bit, try to, um, you know, really, really attack their running since I had to witness what they were going through. And this summer, this, this summer of my, uh, 2012, um, my mom, um, I was working out, you know, wondering what, how I was going to be able to um, come back from an injury that I had. And um, I was really, you know, the thought of running really didn't come into my mind until about midway through um, that summer 2012 when I said, I want to give this one more shot. I have one season left. I have one capability of doing many great things and I have many goals. And I was working with a physical therapist assistant. Um, and I told her that the first goal I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to walk. Dan came to me with a lot of questions throughout his rehab process, just asking if these exercises are what he should be doing, what he should be doing, if he should be doing anything at home. He also needed a lot of emotional support for me because it is a lot of stress to go from being a very active, competitive athlete to being laid up and not being able to uh, compete in your sport or even practice. When I told my parents that, they, oh, my dad, <laughs> he said that it, it, he wasn't smart, that, uh, that uh, you know, you know we, we went back and forth and... Uh, the one thing I remember him telling me when I was growing up was uh, never quit what you're doing. Um, always strive to be the best, and even if you're not, you will achieve. Well, I had to uh, respect his motivation and his willingness to want to continue to do that activity, and, and I understood why he felt he needed to finish what he'd started. But once again, as a parent, um, you know, you don't want to cure kids to be hurt. You don't want you want everything to be okay. Um, you want to shield them from that kind of uh, effort and and that kind of pain. And so, as a parent, you know, once again, I just wanted him to be done and move on to his, the next chapter. Well, no. Do this for yourself and not for anybody else, but yourself. 
And when I finally got to that point, when I'd hit that brick wall, you know, I remember what my dad said to me. He said that uh, never to quit, never give up on yourself. And then, you know, maybe I wouldn't do the whole workout, but I'd do two or three more, two or three more repetitions, two more, three, you know, three or four more 200s, one or two more 200s, one more 150, two more 150s, you know, or another 300 meter meter run, you know, it just, he put, he, he helped me push through it, and he doesn't know how much it really meant to me to have, you know, he said it when I was such young, you know, such at a young age, that uh, when I got to high school, when I got to college, I really didn't think about it until this moment where it really affected my life and where I wanted to be. I think we're really proud of the fact that he's continued and, and put his effort into it and really have wanted to finish what he started. Um, you know, the pride and, and the confidence in his ability to understand what he can and can't do. I think, um, you know, it doesn't alleviate our worry about an additional injury. Um, every time we hear he's going to run um, in competition, we worry about whether or not he'll compete. Um, whether he'll be able to complete the race uh, or whether he'll be re-injured. And uh, so we sway back and forth between um, elation and pride and, and worry and concern. If you have the determination in yourself, you will always succeed in winning your battles. And I think that's where I'm going to come in. You know, I, won't, I haven't stepped on a, a racing line since my sophomore season. You know, I missed a whole year due to an injury. Now I'm a senior and... I have to step on the line for that first time. I'll have a lot of jitters. You know, I'll have a lot of feeling, a lot of emotion going through me if, when I, if and when I cross that line my first time. But it's got to be there. It's got to be one or nothing. It's got to be, just don't give up on yourself. Keep motivating yourself. Find motivation in something, whether it be your teammates, a loved one, a relationship. Find some motivation in whatever you do and exceed it. Ways that these athletes can help prevent these injuries are what we call a prehab program. So it's a preventative rehab program. Um, so in some places, high schools and colleges, physical therapists or athletic trainers are going in and they're, they're doing a training program with these athletes within their practices to help them prevent injuries like ACL tears or sprains or anything like that. Injuries like Dan with meniscus repair isn't necessarily able to prevent, but there is ways to strengthen the muscles to help um, not let it be so common. Uh, coaches do have their athletes do training, strength training and everything like that, but we work on more specific little muscles that help surround these ligaments and everything so that way we have less injuries. Um, so by athletes doing that and do more, doing more stretching throughout the day, three times a day, we can help to prevent these injuries.